we have seen Molly cooking, we have seen the elves at Hogwarts cooking, and not once did we see any of them bringing any groceries. When do they get their groceries and supplies? And from where? And how do they pay for it? Mrs. Weasley only had one golden galleon in her vault when they visited Gringotts in Chamber of Secrets. Today, we find out. Hey everyone, today I wanted to discuss how the wizarding world supply chain works and whether the stage of secrecy is as foolproof as they say, or is there a backdoor left there to keep the wizarding world functioning? For some context, imagine the entire population of the wizarding world. And did we ever hear of a farmer? Almost everyone is either working at the ministry, or has a job, or does nothing, like Lucius Malfoy. Click here to find out how he manages without having a job. Now, normal farming, like grass, growing crops, is not a subject that is taught at Hogwarts. While I'm pretty sure there are farmers who are witches and wizards, I don't think they supply the entire wizarding population. Witches and wizards don't have a large-scale delivery network, like we have, with delivery vans, Target, Walmart, etc. So it's pretty clear that the supplies must be coming from the muggle world. But how? Most wizards even don't know how to dress like muggles or deal with muggle money. Mr. Weasley, a muggle enthusiast, has been known to struggle with muggle money on multiple occasions. And everyone remembers the fiasco in the Quidditch World Cup. There were so many witches and wizards who were so confused with muggle paper money. Simply imagine a scenario where these wizards and witches are going to muggle stores to buy groceries. Just unimaginable. Plus the hassle of how to travel to a muggle store from a wizarding dwelling. Food network is out of the question. They can't operate right on the street or inside the store. And most wizarding families don't even have an option to take a car. We have not seen anyone yet bringing any groceries home in Harry Potter. Not at the borough or Grimmel place. But somehow they have milk, eggs, chicken, potatoes. And imagine Hogwarts, hundreds of students. Clearly the food does not grow on the grounds. So how do they manage it? So this is my theory on how it all works. The supply does come from the muggle world, but I don't think most wizard families are directly going and purchasing those things. I think there are intermediary shops slash companies in the wizarding world, which acts like a bridge between the muggle world and them. What they do is they procure the products, whatever, groceries, everything from the muggle world and then they sell it to the wizards and witches. Now, you can imagine any kind of supplies from wallpapers, paints, clothes, drapes. We have already seen wizards using some of these items. For example, the clothes at Madame Malkin's, the fabric. I don't imagine the fabric is completely from cotton growing to cotton processing, to converting into fabrics, weaving, everything is done in the wizarding world. Definitely not. So I think all of this happens in the muggle world and the supply is taken by these intermediate companies and redistributed inside into the muggle, into the wizarding world actually. Now, in terms of how the orders are placed and paid for, in my head I imagine Mrs. Weasley just going, walking around the house, just taking quick notes on what all she needs, for all the things that she wants to buy and just going to the fireplace, taking a pinch of flu powder, throwing it in the fireplace and saying something like the wizarding grocers, throwing the order slip that she has written. And on the other side, from and somewhere in the depth of Diagon Alley, somewhere in a shop named the wizarding grocer, the piece of parchment will appear out of the fireplace. It will autom automatically fly out of the fireplace, sort itself into a neat pile of orders to be fulfilled. Once the order is ready, house elves will collect them and go around delivering them. That's right, I don't think a human would be able to manage that many deliveries. If you operate too much as a human, you most likely become like Twycross. If you remember Twycross, he's the person who was teaching apparition at Hogwarts when Harry was attending in the sixth year. Now, upon meeting Twycross, Harry described him as oddly colorless with transparent eyelashes, wispy hair as if a gust of wind would blow him away. Harry thought a large amount of apparition and disapparating that he did has caused this to him. The way I like to think about apparition is that humans learned it from elves at some point in history. The same way how in Avatar The Last Airbender, humans learned how to bend different elements from the original sources. Same way I think humans learned from elves how to do apparition. But elves definitely have a certain level of mastery over this technique in comparison to human beings. 
Elves can apparate in and out of places that humans can't, like Hogwarts. They can even follow you while being invisible. And they can also do the same thing that uh, Deluminator, the power that Deluminator has, where it can take you somewhere where somebody is calling you. The same power that Deluminator has, Elves also have. If their master calls them from anywhere, they just disappear and reappear in front of their masters. Now, getting back to the order placing system, I think the same way that Mrs. Weasley just placed the order, elves at Hogwarts also place the order. And I also like to think that the elves have a delivery network. There's one peculiar thing about Harry Potter is that a lot of elves seem to know each other, even though they are working in completely different silos. For example, Somehow Dobby knew about Winky. Winky was working with Mr. Crouch and Dobby was at Malfoy Manor. These are two completely different families. How the hell house elves from these two different families know each other? And that is something that has always bugged me. But think of it like the elf delivery network acts like the olden days mail network that we had. The mailman could bring us the mail and talk about recent stories and news from all around the place and we'd get to know bunch of news from everywhere. I think the same way Elf Network, Delivery Network, introduces elves from each across all over the community to each other. Anyways, for the delivery, it's clear how it works with the Elf Delivery Network. But for the payments, I think they simply collect the money from your bank account. They must have some sort of direct debit system placed in Gringotts. You remember in Chamber of Secrets when Mrs. Weasley goes to collect money from her ward? There was a small pile of silver sickles inside, just one gold galleon. I like to think that maybe Mr. Weasley had not received his next month's salary yet, which I think is pretty obvious. His salary can't be less than Dobby's. Dobby's salary was one galleon per week, and he was offered ten galleons a week by Dumbledore. So maybe the direct debit for the last month's groceries had just been collected in the last couple of days. Maybe the bill was slightly higher this time because Harry had suddenly come home and Mrs. Weasley had to place a 30-minute rush delivery order from the wizarding bosses and it had almost ended up cleaning her vault. Maybe I think too much. Anyway, this is how I think people order regular groceries like milk, eggs in the wizarding world. Happy to hear your thoughts with them. A similar thought process can be applied to any other goods. Magic simply does not last forever. Whatever charms are put on any items, will fade with time. We have already seen this with all the items that Weasley's Wizarding Weasley's were selling. Most of the items which are not naturally occurring, whichever you charm, will basically fade with time. They will not act the same way for years and years. So if you're building a house, you don't want your curtains to suddenly one day disappear, your windows to suddenly one day break apart. So what do you do? You need to get these supplies made manually. And for that to happen, I think, the best option that wizards have is to go via the muggle network. And that's why I think they have intermediary shops set up. And these shops are working with a loophole in the stage of secrecy. So I don't think the stage of secrecy is 100% foolproof. There, there are loopholes to make the wizarding world function. But hey, that's just a theory, a Harry Potter theory. Leave any thoughts that you have in the comment section down below. Hope you had fun. See you in the next one. Bye.